Hey guys, and welcome to Django Bits Designing Models. When you're designing database or Django models, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First of all, we want to keep models as simple as possible, but at the same time, we want to fill them with as much reusable code as possible. When I say simple, I mean that we don't add unnecessary fields to our models that we use to correct field types and similar. But it's also important that we follow best practices when designing models. This makes it easier to understand and maintain our code. In this video, we will go through a few examples of how to design models, best practices and structures. Let's get started. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. So I have an empty Django project here. I have an app called Article, which typically is used for a newspaper or a blog. Um, I want to show an example here of how to do this. So let's say that we want to have a model for the articles. I have added class, article, and then we just extend models.model. So that Django knows that this is a database model. Um, Django comes with a lot of default fields. So I'm just going to add a few of them and I talk about them in a second. First we have the char field, which is typically used for storing short strings like titles of an article, a name or similar. You have to set one attribute here called the max length and it can be from 0 to 255. Next we have a text field which is almost the same, it's just that the text field doesn't have a limitation on the length. So this is typically used for the content or the body of an article. Then we also have a date field which contains information with, for example, when an article was created. So this contains the year, the date and the month. Django also has a lot of other important field types that we need to know about. For example, the email field, um, email, model.email field. And the reason why it's very important that we use email field instead of just a char field, because we could use that if we wanted to, is that Django will now automatically validate the data that we try to paste or pass in here. So if you try to pass in just hello, we will get an error from the database or Django. And the same thing, instead we could use this here for the title if we wanted to, it's just that a text field requires more space in the database than a char field. So that's why it's important to learn about each of these and how and when to use them. Um, you also have an image field. Um, thumbnail equals models.image field. So this makes it easy to upload images connected to an article. Here we need to pass in one parameter, upload to, for example, uh, article images and then all of the files we upload here will be into this folder here. Next we have something called a foreign key and for example created by equals models dot foreign key user and on delete models dot cascade. So what happens here is that we connect this article to a user, which is a different model. This is the default user model that Django comes with, so it makes it easier for us to for example, uh, require authentication for people to create articles. And this is something that we need to always add when we use a foreign key. And what this means is that if a user is deleted, we cascade and delete all of the articles that's created by this user. This could be, for example, set null if you wanted to do that. So that means that if a user is deleted, the articles isn't deleted. This field is just set to null. So then we need to handle this in the front end where we use this field. And then last but not least, I can show the is published models dot boolean field. So this is either true or false. So this is the fields that I typically use the most. You also have a URL field, slug field, date time field, uh, file field and a lot of others. 
you can go in the Django documentations to read about all of these. Next we have some default values that you can set on many of these. For example, when you create an article, instead of manually setting it to published or not published, we could set default equals false. That means that when we create a new article in the Django admin interface, it will be set automatically to false and it will not be published. So then we don't have to think more about that. Uh, and the same goes with this one. Instead of actually setting this manually, we could set auto now add equals true, which means that when this is created by Django, Django will automatically set now to this field here. So we set today's date. Um, we have one more um, modified at models.date field auto now equals true. And that's almost identical to this. It's just that every time that an article is saved, this will now be automatically updated. So if this was created yesterday, but you do a change, this will be updated and have another or a different date. Yeah, we could also have, for example, a slug here models.slug field. This is typically a URL version of the title. For example, hello world. Let's say that the title of the article is that. Then the slug should be hello world. The default value we can set here can be unique equals true. If we try to create two articles with the same slug, Django will give us an error. So let's just remove this now. Then the last field I want to talk about is another char field. You can set status equals models dot char field. Max length is 15. Choices equals status choices. Default equals um, draft. Okay, so now I get two warnings here. I just want to fix that before I explain more. I can say draft equals draft and active equals active. And that means that the default value of this char field or this status will be this draft value. So next is to fix the choices. This has to be a tuple. So we can create this here, status choices, create a tuple, pass in draft and draft and active active. So what happens now is that if you go to the admin interface and try to use or create an article, you will have a drop down menu with these two choices here or the choices that you see in here. This first one here is the value that will be stored in the database. This is just label that we see in the admin interface and other places that we try to print the value of this field. Uh, many people use, for example, zero and one, but that's uh, very uh, hard to understand when you see in the front end, for example, status is just value zero. It's hard to understand what it is. That's why I always use char fields for this. And the reason why I set it up here is that, for example, um, when we save an article, we can say article equals article.object.get primary key is one. You can say article equals article dot active and article dot save. So then we know that the value that we get from here will always be the same that we use in the model and other places. So this is how I like to set up the fields for a database model in Django. Next step is something called a string representation. If we create an article and go in the database, we will see something weird. We will just see an object representation of this here. So what we want to show by default is the title. So then we set def, which is a method, str, pass in self, since this is a class, and say return self.title. So then it's, instead of seeing the object and the object ID, we actually see the title of the article, which makes it much easier to see what we are working with. And this is sort of the ordering that models should have. You should have the constants at the top, then the fields, and then the built-in functions. And there are some others that we typically use, like for example the get absolute URL, def get absolute URL. And then we for example say 
article um, or show article and then we pass in the let's use the slug instead of the primary key so what this does is that it's trying to find this name inside the urls file where we pass in the slug from up here and then we get a full url to that one and then we can get or use this for example just article.get absolute url and then we will be returned with a url directly to this article this is also used in sitemaps and similar so when you're adding functions to a class or methods as it is actually called we use the built-in comes right after the fields below here we could create our own custom functions like def get image or thumbnail Oops. and now we can say if self dot thumbnail return self dot thumbnail dot url and if not we can return nothing or we could here say http code with stein oops default image dot png so if there aren't an image we return this so instead of using this in the front end we can just use this method which makes it very easy to get the image so you don't have to check in the front end if the article has an image then the last step that i usually do in models is work with the ordering for example up here we can say class meta to configure this model and i would say ordering equals minus created at and this should be a tuple and since this is a tuple we need to add a comma at the end here so this will now return all of the articles by default in uh, with the newest first and then older and older we could add more things in here for example verbose name equals article which is norwegian for article if you wanted to show this in the admin interface instead of article and i can also add a plural name verbose name plural articler so that's how we can configure what is showing as the titles in the django admin interface next i just want to show a simple function in eraser here on how we can use ai to generate a diagram of a database model for an entire e-commerce website so i can just click this one and i want to create an entity relationship and by the way this is completely free to test so in here you can say I want to create an e-commerce website using Django. Can you set up the database models for me? I want to have categories and products generate. So let's see what we get here and then we can work on that. Yeah, so first here you can see we have the products with the name, description, price, if it's in stock and the category id so this is connected cool so diagram edit prompt and what um i also want to make it possible for the product to have variants like colors and sizes because maybe you want different sizes on clothes and colors or other things like that generate edits let's see what we get then yeah so now we have a variant here uh, in the size and the color that's good um, can you also include models for order orders and order items yeah so now we can see that we actually have a database scheme on how we can set up a complete database scheme for an e-commerce website the categories are connected to the products the products are connected to the variants and the variants are added as order items in the database each of the order items is connected to one order and 
to talk a little bit more about Django here, um, for example, the name should be a char field, description should be a text field, price is typically a float field or an integer field, uh, and then we have the foreign keys. This one is a foreign key for categories. And then we have the date field, the integer field, etc. I think I can also study the code in here. So if I wanted to work more on this, so instead of saying name string here, I can say char field. And down here I can say text field. And this should be a big int. So that's how we can make this a little bit more Django-ish. So this is something I typically do when I start to build a project for my own. It's just easy to do this when you're building a new product because you can see a much better glance of the whole thing you are building and how things are and should be connected. So now it's just to start building the e-commerce by adding, a, for example, an order database, an order app, maybe you have a product app, and a categories app. If you have questions about this AI generation here, how you can use it better or similar, feel free to ask a question below and I will answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.